I'll get started. Welcome to IELTS Reading Super Skills. This is the third one we've done this quarter. And my name is Jay and I work at E2 Language. I'm one of the expert teachers. The first thing I want to talk to you about is IELTS Reading in general. It's all about finding needles in haystacks. What does that mean? Well, this is a saying in English where something is incredibly hard to find, right? It's all about finding keywords in paragraphs. That's what IELTS reading is about, finding a needle in a haystack. So let's first think about synonyms because one of the most critical skills that you need to have or understand is synonyms. A synonym, of course, is a word that that means the same thing as another word, like big and large, or small and tiny, or uh, hungry and starving, for example. These are synonyms, words that mean the same thing. So let's do a little warm up. I just want you to find the synonyms in this paragraph, please. You have 10 seconds. Look into this passage and find the word, find the synonyms, quite literally. 10 seconds. Cool. All right. It was a bit of a joke, actually, but this is basically what happens in IELTS reading. You have your question over here, and in the question will be a key word, right? Then you need to look at the text or the passage, and you need to find the corresponding key word in the text, and it will often be a synonym. It more often than not won't be the same word as the question. So here, for example, you'll, look in the key, you'll find the key word. Here, you'll look in the passage, and you'll find a synonym. Same thing here, keyword, synonym, keyword, synonym. This is the essence of IELTS reading. Let's do a little warm up. I want you to find the synonyms in this text here. So here are the words. You can imagine that these are in the question and here is the passage. You need to go through and find the different synonyms. I'll give you a few minutes to complete this one. Cool. Pop them into the chat as you go. Good, Kushbu. Well done. Please work fast. You're nearly quarter of the way through your time already. Good, Joe Marie, well done. Keep going. You're halfway through your time. You should be now up to number five. Good, Donna. Well done. Well done, Deepak. 
Now see if you can get three, four, six, and seven. About 30 seconds left. Kushbu, check your number eight, please. And on YouTube, well done, Mayara, looking good. And Maman. Good, Joe Marie. So number 10 has two parts. What are the two parts? Understand signals and should be a verb noun. Cool, well done. That's probably enough time. That's the kind of pace that you need to read. So let's have a look. Here are the key words in the questions. Here's the passage. What IELTS do is they give you the key word here and here there is a synonym. So let's go through the answers so you can see what I mean. So understand. Imagine this is in the question and it's asking you something about understanding. And here in the text it says interpret. So now you know where to read and where to find the answer. Understand, interpret. Associating, attributing. Cognitive, mental. It's all about synonyms, empathizing with, adopting the perspectives of. So here it's not just a single word. It's actually multiple words that mean the same thing. Feelings, emotions, fine, that's easy. That's just a noun and a noun. Goals, intentions, the wild, the animal kingdom. So you can imagine it's asking you something in the question about the wild. And then in the passage, it mentions something about the animal kingdom. Show, demonstrate is looking at, has an eye on. So here we've got a phrase, is looking at, and here we've got a very strange phrase, keep an eye on something or has an eye on. So these mean the same things. Understand signals, interpret cues. Cool, how did you go? Let's have a look. Looking good, looking good, well done. Right, let's do something a little bit different now. Here's a phrase telling the difference. I'm going to give you a whole paragraph. What you need to do is quickly scan your eyes over the paragraph and keep this keyword in your mind, this phrase rather, telling the difference, telling the difference, telling the difference. Then you're going to look at the paragraph and you're going to find the synonymous phrase, the corresponding phrase, the phrase that means the same thing. Cool. So start repeating this in your mind, telling the difference, telling the difference. You got 20 seconds telling the difference. Ten seconds. Telling the difference. What's the synonym? Good, you got it just on time. <laughs> That's right, maybe you needed more than 20 seconds. So let's have a look. Differentiating, telling the difference or differentiating. These are synonyms. Let's do another one. I want you to find the synonym for the word confused. Confused, confused. You have 20 seconds. Ten seconds. Good, Kushbu, well done. Good, Joe Marie, got it. Three, two, one, end. So you had to quickly read your eyes, scan your eyes over this paragraph saying confused, 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 no, 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 perplexed, interesting. That's the synonym for the word confused, for the adjective confused. These mean the same things. Let's do it again. This time, take out. A phrasal verb, take out, to take something out, to take something out, take out, take out. What's the synonym here?
Good, Kushbu. Well done. You got it. Good, Deepak. Aman got it as well. Well done. Good. Good. I'll give you another 10 seconds. Cool. All right. Let's have a look. So take out, take out, take out, take out. We're running our eyes over. Generators are crucial to the encryption that protects our privacy and security when engaging in a digital transaction. Could be it, actually. I didn't see that. Transaction could be take out because you, well, not quite. What about withdrawing cash? Withdrawing cash, taking out cash, withdrawing cash. These are the synonyms. These mean the same things. This is the skill that you need to develop. If you want to get a high IELTS reading score, this is the skill. How do you develop this though? First of all, you need to understand the nature of synonyms. You need to understand that that in the question is a keyword, in the passage is a synonym. But that's not it. That's an understanding of it. What's the skill? The skill is that you actually have a big enough vocabulary where you know that take out and withdraw mean the same thing. You have a big enough vocabulary that you know that confused and perplexed mean the same thing. Okay, this is what it's about. There's no trick to it really. You need a large vocabulary in order to do this accurately and to do it efficiently, to do it quickly. They are the two real things that you need to keep in mind while doing IELTS reading is accuracy, yes. You have to be accurate, but you also have to be efficient. You can't be slow because you'll just simply run out of time. So accuracy and efficiency, large vocabulary, your ability to spot synonyms is critical. But there's another skill. So the synonym one's important, but there's another one where you need to understand or ask yourself, what's the main idea? These are the two main skills. First one, synonym. Second one, main ideas, main ideas. So let's do a few little activities here. I want you to scan, read the paragraph again to find the main idea, okay? Run your eyes across it, read it very quickly, and pick out what is the central idea. So imagine if you took this paragraph and you put it into a saucepan and you turned on the oven, the hot plate, and you boiled this paragraph down, and what's left would be the main idea. So let's think about this while looking at this one here. I want you to read this paragraph and decide A, B, or C, or D, which is the main idea. I'll give you another minute. I want you to double check your answer. Think about what the most important part of this paragraph is. What's the scientific breakthrough? So Deepak, check C. I don't think it's C. 30 seconds left. I'm going to give you a hint. It's not D. It's not D. Fifteen seconds. Good, Basil. Well done.
All right, let's stop there. Good, Aman. Confident, confident, confident. Okay, let's have a look. Salty foods make makes salty foods makes you th- salty foods make you thirstier. Sorry, my grammatical mistake there. Salty foods make you thirstier. Again, my grammatical mistake. Salty foods make you less thirsty. Okay, one salty foods make you thirstier, more thirsty, or less thirsty makes you salty foods makes you <laughs> make you energetic. Salty foods are important on Mars. Hmm. Well, let's have a look. We've all heard it. Eating salty foods makes you thirstier. But what sounds like good nutritional advice turns out to be not true. So it's not A. It's not A. And this is something you have to be careful of in IELTS reading is deceptive sentences. So the first sentence looks like it's true. Okay, great. I found it. That was so easy. But then the second sentence will contradict the first sentence and make it untrue. So you need to keep reading to find the answer often. What sounds like good nutritional advice turns out to be not true in the long run. In a study carried out during a simulated mission to Mars, an international group of scientists has found exactly the opposite to be true. So salty foods make you thirstier. The opposite is true. Salty foods make you less thirsty. The answer is B. And please forgive my grammatical errors there. I must have copied and pasted from that sentence there. The answer is B. Salty foods make you less thirsty. Interesting. That was a tough one. Let's do a a simpler one. What's the main idea? The main idea. Good. Much better. Looking good this time. Give you another 30 seconds for this one. Ten seconds. Cool. All right, let's have a look. All right, so if we if we took this paragraph and we boiled it down to find the main idea, what would it be about? Would it be about ocean litter? Is this about ocean litter? Well, it mentioned ocean litter. What about, is it about the world's oceans? Is that what it's about? Or is it about fuel from plastic? Or is it about mobile reactors? Let's have a look. So ocean litter, billions of pounds of plastic waste are littering the world's oceans. So it's got this one. A and B in the first sentence. But this sentence is the important one. Now, an organic chemist and a sailboat captain report that they are developing a process to reuse certain plastics, transforming them from worthless trash into a valuable diesel fuel with a mobile reactor. The answer is C. This is about making fuel from plastic. One more before we begin our mini mock tests. Scan read to find the main idea Here we go.
Another 30 seconds. All right, let's take a look. Let's read this. Is it about bed bug ancestors? Is it about the oldest insects ever found? Is it about a very special cave? Or is it about ancient human activity? So a cave in Oregon that is the site of some of the oldest preserved evidence of human activity in North America was also once home to not too distant cousins of the common bed bug. Archaeologists describe remains of the common bed bug found in caves near Paisley or Oregon that represent the oldest specimens of insects from the genus Cymex ever found ranging between 5,100 and 11,000 years old? The answer is A. This is about bed bug ancestors, not too distant cousins of the common bed bug, oldest specimens of insects. This is about bed ancestors of bed bugs. Is it about the oldest insects ever found? No, it doesn't mention that. It says uh, it represents from the genus Cymex. So they're the oldest ones from this particular genus. It mentions this very special cave, but that's not what it's about. And it mentions ancient human activity, but that's not what it's about. Cool. All right, I know that was tough, but that's what it's all about. It's about synonyms and it's about main ideas. And it's also about understanding the IELTS question types. So what we're going to do today is something a bit different. I'm going to give you a very simplified IELTS question type, just so you don't have to struggle with the content of the passage, so you know how to answer the question. And once you understand it conceptually, then we're going to do a more difficult one. Okay, but before we do that, what I want you to do on a piece of paper is just write down one, two, three, down to number 10 like this, because this will be our answer sheet. And we'll use this for all of the real questions we do. So we're going to simulate the IELTS reading exam. So please write that down. I'll just give you 20 seconds to do that. Cool. All right. And we'll start off with multiple choice. Why? Because just about every IELTS reading exam contains a multiple choice question. They're extremely common. So let's do a really simple one. Okay. This is what the question looks like on test day. And this is why it's confusing. This is a very, very simple passage. So please read, read the question, then read the passage, then answer the question. Put the answer into the chat. So, Sureka, please check your number two. Donna, check your number one. Kushbu, you might have to turn your phone screen if you're watching this on your phone. Good. Okay. Dead simple. Dead simple. You should have just got this immediately. First of all, it says Jay has a red car. He bought his car off his Uncle Tim for $400. It rattles and smokes, but it still works. What color is Jay's car? Pink, green, red, or black? From whom did Jay purchase his car? Rattle, smoke, Jay, or Tim? The answer, of course, is 
red, one C, and two D, Tim. He bought it off Tim. Fine. Now we understand how to do this question. So what you do is you quickly, well, this is what I do. You look into the question, you find the key word like color, for example. Then you look into the paragraph and you see the word red. So you know what? That's where you should be reading. Um, here you're going to be looking for a name. So you look into the passage and you find the name. That's how you do this one. So let's do the multiple choice for real with a complex paragraph. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this. Um, actually, we'll give you quite a lot of time. I want you to get it right. Concentrate on accuracy, not so much on efficiency. Give you one more minute. I see a lot of people writing for number two, choosing D. It doesn't me measure internet reliance. Here it says it's used to measure excessive reliance on the internet. So the answer for two is not D. So I'll give you another 30 seconds. Please check your number two. It's not D. I'll also give you another hint. Question two starts from starts from this sentence here.
Cool. All right. Let's take a look at the answers here. In fact, let's first read the question. Number one says, what is the main problem with the IAT or the Internet Addiction Test? What's the main problem? So as we saw before, we're looking for the main idea in the paragraph. Is it A, it relies on old data? Is that the main problem? Or B, it does not utilize modern internet tools? Or C, it's just outdated? Or D, it has changed significantly over time? The answer is C, it's outdated. And if you look at this particular sentence, it says the IAT was developed in 1998 prior to the widespread use of smartphone technology. In addition, internet use has changed radically over the last 18 years. So one C is correct. A, B, and D are not right. It just simply doesn't say that. What about number two? One particular problem with the IAT, and now we're reading for detail. We're not reading for a main idea. A, it may be overstating results. B, it's not standardized. C, it was developed prior to 1998. D, it doesn't measure internet reliance. Let's have a look at B first. It's not standardized. Well, here it says the IAT is the standard test, so it's not B. What about C? It was developed prior to 1998. It says the IAT was developed in 1998, so it's not C. What about D? It doesn't measure internet reliance. Well, it says here, it says it's used to measure excessive reliance on the internet. So it's not D. The answer is A, it may be overstating results. Why? Showing up false positives for people who were simply using the internet rather than being over-reliant on it. So for questions one and two, you can write on your answer sheet C and A. And if you got that, please put a smiley face into the chat. I just want to check. Good work, Basile and Kushbu. Well done. They weren't particularly easy questions. Good work. Nice. What about on YouTube? How are you going? Cool. And Aruna got it as well. Nice. 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 Right. True, false, not given. We're going to do this one every week. Why? Because conceptually, it's very difficult. It's a crazy question. It's hard to understand. True and false is easy to understand, but not given is something that you need to practice. So let's have a look at a very simple one here. So this time you'll be writing T, F, or N, G. Here it's the same paragraph as we saw before. It says, Jay has a red car. He bought it off his uncle Tim for $400. It rattles and it smokes, but it still works. Number three says, Jay owns a green car. Is this true? In which case it says the same thing as the paragraph. Is it false? In which case it directly contradicts what's in the paragraph or not given is there just no information given about this so we cannot know and we cannot assume anything so please do three four and five Good. Okay. Let's have a look at the answers. This was, of course, dead simple. So, answers. Jay owns a green car is false. Why? Because it directly contradicts this first sentence that says Jay has a red car. Jay owns a green car. Jay has a red car. Direct contradiction must be false. Jay's car is old. Well, it doesn't say anything about that. It mentions that it's red. It mentions that I bought it off my Uncle Tim for $400. It mentions that it rattles and it smokes, but it still works. But it doesn't say anything about the age of the car. And we can't assume just because it's red and then it was cheap and then it rattles and smokes, it's old. You can't assume anything. Therefore, it's not given because there's just simply no information on this. And the last one, Jones, a red car is true. It says the exact same thing, but in different words. So let's take that understanding and that concept and apply it to some real questions of difficulty. 
I'll give you a few minutes to do these ones. One more minute. Twenty seconds. All right, another. 30 seconds actually, 30 seconds starts now. Ten seconds, please put in your answers. All right, so we need to think about whether these statements are true, whether they say the same thing as the passage, whether they're false, whether they directly contradict what's said in the passage, or whether there's just no information 
And we can't assume anything. We can't read between the lines, in which case it'll be not given. So number three, people who are visually creative suffer more frequent nightmares. Well, here it says visually creative people, fine, report disturbed sleep. Does that mean nightmares? Not necessarily. And we can't assume that disturbed sleep means nightmares. Maybe they just wake up more. So the answer to this one is not given. It's not directly contradicting. It's not saying the same thing, so it's not true. It's saying something else and we don't know. Therefore, it has to be not given. What about visually creative people daydream more than normal people? Well, it says that visually creative people report disturbed sleep leading to difficulties in daytime functioning. Maybe they daydream more. It doesn't direct, it, nothing said here that contradicts it and it doesn't say the same thing. We can't assume anything, so it's also going to be not given. So three and four are both not given. What about five? It says verbally creative people sleep longer than visually creative people. Okay, fine. Here it says, in case of verbally creative people, they sleep more hours. More hours, longer. Verbally creative people sleep longer than visually creative people. True. Number six, visual and verbal creativity utilize similar mental and physical workings. This is this final sentence here. This demonstrates that the expression of visual creativity involves different psychological, mental, biological, physical mechanisms, workings. There's our synonym that we learned before. So this one is uh, false. Um, the expression of visual creativity involves different, ah, here it says similar. So there's, there's the difference. There's the direct uh, contradiction, similar versus different. So if you had not given, not given, true and false, they are the correct answers. Please put a smiley face into the chat if you got that. Cool. Well done, Kushbu. Excellent. Basil got three out of four. Pretty good. Elizabeth got them all right. Nice. And Aruna got them all right. Joe Marie got three. I think the first one tricked people. The idea of a disturbed sleep doesn't necessarily mean nightmares. So that's where most people went wrong there. Cool. Let's do sentence completion. This is the last question type. Let's do a dead simple one first. Okay. This is one of the question types that you may receive in your test. Sentence completion. Fine. It's actually pretty straightforward. So what you need to do is finish the sentence. The last word or words, it depends on the instruction. Here it says choose no more than one word. So we can only have one word to complete these sentences. So the color of Jay's car is something. Jay sometimes does stand up something. At E2 Language, Jay teaches something. So please quickly do this. I'll give you one minute to complete, whoops, complete these sentences from the paragraphs. Good, make sure you spell that one right, please, Sureka. Good, nice. And Aruna, make sure you have a capital letter on that final one or else it will be considered wrong. Has to be grammatically correct, including punctuation. Basil, check your, the spelling of your number, uh, the second one there. Sorry, I just realized I didn't change the numbers here. Should be different numbers. Cool. All right, let's have a look at the answers. The answers are, well, we know that the color of Jay's car is red. This is a word taken directly from the text, and that's what you have to do in the IELTS. You don't create words. You take them directly from the text to complete the sentence, whether it's one word, two words, three words, etc. Number eight, Jay sometimes does stand up what? Comedy. 
that completes the sentence correctly because it also aligns with the paragraph here. And number nine, at EU language, J teaches English, capital E. If you do put a lowercase e, it will be considered incorrect. Uh, also be careful with singular and plural nouns. For example, if the answer is cars, plural with an S, and you wrote car, it would be considered incorrect. So be, you have to be very particular with your grammar. Let's do some sentence completion ones for real using real paragraphs. Let me disappear. I'll give you a few minutes to do these ones. Good, Kushbu, well done, looking good. Two more minutes. So Basil, remember this is 
one word only. Please read those instructions at the top. So check your number nine. Same with you, Surika. You can only write one word, not two. So check your number nine. One minute left. Yes, Kushbu, I guess you have to assume what type of resources. In the sentence before, it talks about emotions. Twenty seconds left. Cool. Let's stop there and have a look at the answers for this one here. So answers. Number seven, recognizing happiness or sadness after a hard night's sleep may what? Well, here it's taken from the first sentence. And this is a good point because what happens in the IELTS reading is that the questions are sequential. So seven will be located at the top of the paragraph. Eight will come next. Nine will come next. And you read down the paragraph as the questions descend as well. So the answer here is suffer, you could suffer. Now eight, in order to survive major threats, we are hardwired to recognize emotions that are considered more what? More primitive. We're wired to recognize those more primitive emotions in order to survive acute dangers. So here the adjective primitive emotions, emotions that are considered more primitive. That's the answer for number eight. Number nine, social emotions are less important for us to recognize as they don't depend on our survival. Social emotions such as happiness and sadness are less necessary, less important for us to recognize for immediate survival. Some people wrote both words immediate survival and this would be considered incorrect because if you look at the instruction, it says no more than one word. So, in fact, you had to choose the noun there, survival. Number 10, when it comes to our immediate safety and well-being, we are more likely to reallocate our mental what? Our mental resources. We're more likely to dedicate our resources, reallocate, dedicate our resources to blah, 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 blah. Suffer, primitive, survival, and resources were the correct answers. If you write resource singular, it would also be considered incorrect as well. So let's have a look at the answer sheet. Your answer sheet, if you got them all right, was number one was C, two was A, three was NG, four NG, five T, six F, seven suffer, eight primitive, nine survival, 10 resources. Please type into the chat what score you got out of 10. Deepak, 9 out of 10. Nice work. Malene, 8. Kushbu, 10. Great work. Jo Marie, 8. Basile, 9. Sureka, 8. Donna, 6. Aruna, 8. Kwang Nguyen Hu, 10. Nice. Cool. All right, fine. Sri Ram, 5. Aman, 7. No problemo. Cool. Thanks for coming along. Just before you leave, I just want to talk to you quickly about why you should upgrade your package at e2language.com. So I'm not sure if we have any paid users or what the ratio is to free to paid. But here's the reason why. First thing you do when you sign up at e2language.com is you get a one-on-one -on -one study plan. This is where you meet with the teacher and the teacher writes you a study plan, sets you in the right direction, gives you a timetable, tells you exactly what you need to do, areas of weakness, areas of strength, etc. On the website, you'll find methods like the methods that we saw today, not just for reading, but you'll find methods for listening, speaking, writing, as well as reading. 
materials, heaps of practice materials for you to practice the methods on, feedback. So we give you written feedback on your writing and speaking. You also, as part of the package that you buy, you'll get one-on-one -on -one tutorials with expert teachers. These are 40-minute one-on-one tutorials on Zoom, which is a platform like Skype. Live classes we do every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And more than anything, you get constant motivation until you pass. You also get one, you get access until you pass the test as well, up to one year. Cool, so that's enough from me. Let's just do a quick Q&A and then we'll call it a day. You can enjoy your weekends. Basil, Jay, when will you work on writing? I'm having some difficulties in that module. Basil, I highly recommend that you upgrade your account because we've got dozens and dozens of writing lessons on both IELTS General and IELTS Academic. So do check that out. Um, we also have live classes every Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on IELTS Writing. Um, Kushbu, I wish I discovered it before. I have my IELTS on the 29th. Kushbu, we just have uh, launched an express package. Uh, which is, I think it's 69 US dollars, and you'll get full access to the platform, including all of the methods lessons, all of the practice material. Uh, it's worth doing because it's a hell of a lot cheaper than having to take your IELTS again. So it's a bit of a, I wouldn't say a guarantee, but it certainly will boost your scores, and hopefully you only have to do this IELTS once. Cool. Any other questions before I go? Deepak, how much time should we spend on the different sections of the reading section? It's too difficult to say because the passages will differ from test to test. The rule of thumb is that you just have to be accurate and efficient. How do you be accurate and efficient? Well, you need to boost your vocabulary. You need to learn the question types. You need to, you need to learn the methods and you need to practice the methods. So that's what it's all about. It's not so much understanding 30 seconds here, 40 seconds here. It's about getting it right and doing it quickly. Uh, Kushbu, I'm finding labeling maps difficult. So I'm pretty sure we have something on the website for that, Kushbu. Deepak, IELTS reading general will be of same level as like today's mock test. The question types will be the same, but the passages will be slightly less academic. So I'm inclined to say slightly easier slightly easier. Donna, do you have live listening classes? No, we don't do live listening classes, but what we do do is we have uh, video lessons, dozens of video lessons on the website going through all the different listening question types as well as mock tests as well. Aruna, I got 8.5 in speaking in IELTS, but less in speaking for PTE. How do I correct? That's pretty typical. The PTE is very difficult to get a high speaking score, whereas the IELTS is very difficult to get a high writing score. So, Aruna, if you send an email through hello at e2language.com and we'll take a look at your report card for PTE and give you a recommendation if you like. Cool. Kushbu, I have trouble logging in on the website. I'm in touch with the IT team. Let's see. Hmm, odd. Not sure what's happening there. Elizabeth, I'm having difficult with some unexpected vocabularies. Yes, you need to build your vocabulary. Um, I am a paid user. Increased my initial score from five or six out of 10 to eight or nine out of 10. Uh, will it? I, if, you, if you practice, I'm almost certain that it will. Basil, thanks for the class. It's a boost. Yes, it's a boost. And that's what it's all about. Cool. I'll leave you guys to it. Have an enjoyable Saturday. I'll see you soon. Do think about upgrading at e2language.com. See you.